You're watching WGAL 8. Now, coverage you can count on continues from the Susquehanna Valley's most watched news team. This is News 8 at 11 in HD. A treacherous commute in many areas of the Susquehanna Valley tonight as a result of water ponding on roads because of the heavy rain. Some of those roads are still closed tonight and emergency crews are warning of high water that could get higher as the night and this storm wear on. The flood warning is our top story tonight. Good evening. I'm Ron Martin. I'm Janelle Stelson and Doug Allen. All anybody wants to know is when's it going to stop? Well, I'll tell you, the rain's going to go on for much of the night tonight. The heavier bands are moving through right now, but the rainfall amounts have exceeded expectations and the rates at which is coming down have also exceeded expectations. Mm. That's why uh, the rain is uh, just causing these flooding issues around the valley right now. This is where we have the uh, warnings in place uh, for Lancaster, York and Adams counties as it stands now. Now that is in effect until midnight tonight uh, for Franklin, Cumberland County, Lebanon, Dauphin and Perry counties until 1:15 in the morning. I would not be at all surprised to see the Weather Service extend these given the fact that we still have some moderate to heavy rain in those uh, Warren County. Some of the rainfall amounts are really incredible here. Uh, taking a look at York, which is working on six inches. These are all from the airports, by the way, Harrisburg over four, 2.6 in Lancaster. Now Lebanon and Reading are both at about an inch and a half. And you can see on the regional radars how all of this moisture continues to flow in from the south and the east and there's actually a bit of a tropical connection to this coming up the Atlantic traveling the entire eastern seaboard before hanging a left hand turn and making its way into the Susquehanna Valley where it banks up against the mountains. You get this additional lift and you can see heavy bands of rain. Uh, York still seeing some of this activity right up through York now and stretching back over into Adams County in moderate to heavy rain from Harrisburg north and west and as you get down into Adams and uh, Franklin counties as well, particularly around Waynesboro right now, some very heavy rain is coming down. So our planner keeps the rain around tonight about 50 rain and drizzle in the morning tomorrow. Then some more occasional rain and drizzle. Breezy in the afternoon, guys. 58 degrees. We'll take a look ahead to the weekend. The system will likely still be in the neighborhood even then. Details on that coming up. All right, thank you, Doug. And of course, stay with us on air and online for the latest on the flood warning. You can track the storm and get up the minute to the minute forecast from the News 8 Storm Team at WGAL.com and on WGAL Mobile. Well, Pennsylvania and Big Tobacco are at odds tonight, and that's leading to some deep cuts for health centers statewide. News 8's Chris Hush is here to explain. Chris? Janelle Ron, the State Department of Health could lose more than half of its funding it receives annually from tobacco companies. That funding supports anti-smoking programs and medical treatment for smokers. And tonight, those who rely on those services are feeling a little burned out. I tell you what, it's one of the almost the hardest things I've had to do in life. 59-year-old Stuart Kaiser of Gettysburg spent 42 years of his life as a smoker until he joined the Freedom from Smoking program eight weeks ago at Wellspan's Gettysburg Hospital. But the program that's helped nearly 250 people quit in the last year has now cut more than 50% of its services due to funding cuts. If you don't have that crutch, you don't have that meeting, the atmosphere of really people there telling you the years that they smoked and how they've given it up, I just feel that, you know, they're really going to be lost. In 1998, major tobacco companies like Philip Morris entered into what's called a master settlement agreement with 46 states. Under that, tobacco companies agree to pay states annually for medical treatments for smokers if the states promised not to sue them. Pennsylvania gets around $300 million annually under this deal, but now tobacco companies want the state to pay back $170 million of that. Tobacco says it's because Pennsylvania did not properly collect payment on the state's sales of tobacco products in 2003. Big number. Very big number. Kevin Alvernaz of Wellspan says of the $104,000 the State Department of Health budgeted for them, $90,000 of it has been cut. Medical treatment like nicotine patches and school outreach programs have ceased as of October 1st. We have to cut back. Uh, if not eliminate the prevention programs that have been happening for young children, teens and adolescents throughout Adams County. The cuts also mean York staff members have to drive out to Gettysburg for one on one and group counseling. Now the only two services of the program still running. But we can't give up. You know, I don't like that word no. And Wellspan isn't giving up. They want to make it clear that all of their smoking cessation programs are not going away. They are just limited until they find other sources of funding. Meanwhile, the state's attorney general's office says it plans to fight the decision made during arbitration. Ron. Thank you, Chris. 
The government remains in a partial shutdown tonight as the nation inches toward a default on its debt. But there are some encouraging signs from Washington tonight where lawmakers could be closer to an agreement. NBC's Steve Handelsman reports. The Boehner proposal would put off default next Thursday by raising the borrowing limit for six weeks if President Obama agrees to negotiations. And I would hope uh, that the president would look at this as an opportunity and a good faith effort uh, on our part uh, to move halfway, halfway to what he's demanded in order to have these conversations begin. Halfway because Tea Party Republicans point out the government shutdown continues over health care. And when it comes to the issues dealing with Obamacare, we're going to continue to hold our ground. If the Tea Party does not block the Boehner deal on the debt ceiling, President Obama, who wants a longer term agreement, would still sign it. It's because he thinks that we need to avoid default. Senate Democrats at the White House said no talks start with government closed. Not going to happen. For Republicans who met separately with the president left and back on Capitol Hill, the House Majority Leader said talks will continue. We'll come back to have more discussion. The president said that he would go and consult uh, with uh, the administration folks, and hopefully we can uh, see a way forward. Default could drive down home sales, real Things estate could, agent uh, Suzanne DeMare told me. I worry about people changing their minds. If they're nervous, if they don't feel that they have the security in their jobs, um, they're not going to go forward and purchase a home. But with seven days till default, a deal looks possible. I'm Steve Handels, NBC News, Capitol Hill. Well, tonight, the president signed into law a bill that allows military families to once again receive death benefits. Since this shutdown, more than two dozen service members have died, but the Pentagon had to deny families the $100,000 they would customarily be paid. Farms are also being denied government money, and across the U.S., farmers are fearful that without the subsidies, costs could go up. For everybody, farmers say, if they have to pay more, so will you at the grocery store. And we have continuing coverage on the government shutdown and what it's doing, including the latest on a possible deal to end it. That's online at WGAL.com. Two Susquehanna Valley high schools will be taking to the field tomorrow without some of their best players. It's because of a fight that broke out last Friday. This is video taken during the brawl. Several Susquehanna and still high players began fighting just before halftime. The game had to be stopped and some players were ejected. The Mid-Pen Conference says it will monitor both teams for the remainder of the season. In Dauphin County, police say two teenagers posed as door-to-door -door magazine salesmen to con residents. Derry Township Police say the teens claim to be from Hershey High School and that their magazine sales were to raise money for cancer research. The victims say the duo demanded to be paid in cash and upfront. I think that was a signal, you know, the pressure. I have to have it now. And I, I believe me, if I had a thought right and wasn't so tired, I would not have given him anything. Police say the two teens did not have a permit. They suggest that residents always ask a door-to-door -door salesman to show a permit as the state law requires. Also in Dauphin County, police were responding to a car crash last night when a second car pulled up with a gunshot victim inside. It happened on Route 230. That's where Lower Swatera Township police say a man crashed his car into a pole. An off-duty officer stopped to help and the second car pulled up. Inside was 28-year-old Terrence Slade Jr. of Steelton. Slade's friend was driving and told police Slade accidentally shot himself in the leg. Both Slade and the driver of the crashed car were taken to the hospital by ambulance. Slade later died. In York County, York College is increasing campus security after two students were robbed at gunpoint yesterday. The school says its security guards are working additional hours and it is bringing in detectives from SHAD. The agency will have four officers on campus from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. There will be marked car and foot patrols as well. In Lebanon, police say a woman was hit in the face last night after she refused to hand over her purse during an attempted robbery. It happened around midnight on the 1100 block of Brandywine Street. Police say the woman was sitting in her car when a man with a gun banged on her window. She kicked him and ran off, and he ran off. In Lancaster County, a difference of opinion over whether to get a police department a new canine officer. Mike and Connie Bury launched the Columbia Canine Campaign, and now they have the money to purchase a new dog for the department. The current canine Max is nine years old and has served since 2006. The Buries say Max may need to retire soon and they like to start training a puppy to replace him. But the police chief and the mayor have said no thanks.
This, this is the town's dog. This is absolutely the town's dog. And it's just, I just can't imagine why anyone would try to put the brakes on the program or, or whatever. It just it makes no sense to me. The mayor and police chief refused an on-camera interview about the matter. They say they'd like to get opinions on Max's longevity from his veterinarian and trainer before moving forward. They also have concerns about the puppy the canine group is offering because dogs cannot be certified until they are two. In tonight's Project Economy, as Washington moves closer to a deal that would raise the debt limit, Wall Street moved up big. The Dow jumping 323 points to end at 15,126. The NASDAQ was up just shy of 83, and the S&P 500 was a 36-point gainer, but not all of today's economic news was good. There has also been a jump in unemployment. The Labor Department reports first-time jobless claims. They jumped by 66,000 last week to 374,000. Just last week, applications were near a six-year low. More fallout from the government shutdown tonight, how it could affect what beer you drink. Eight on your side government reporter Pete Muntean explains. Brewmaster Bill Moore knew John Q. Public would be hit by the government shutdown. And now Joe Sixpack being involved by the fact that, we, you know, we're trying to move forward. With a new craft brew featuring coffee grounds, normally it takes three weeks for Lancaster Brewing Company to get approval from the feds. Now the process is slower than molasses. And right now it's been ground to a halt. So where, where does it stand? We can't call anybody and say, uh, you know, you know, there's nobody to answer the phone, evidently. A part of the U.S. Treasury, the Alcohol, Tobacco, Tax and Trade Bureau processes all new beer recipes. In the shutdown, applications for anything new are stuck in the agency's hopper. That's why Bill thinks Congress is drunk with power. I don't know what they're drinking, in all honesty, but they won't be drinking our stuff if they don't get the work so I can get approvals. The hope was to have the new beer ready by the end of the year, but reality is getting harder to swallow. I didn't picture that it was going to be a problem for us, but as this thing lingers on into its second week, it could go three weeks, it could go four weeks. We don't know. Lucky for Bill, he says beer helps calm the nerves. Well, I'll have another beer. I probably will. I'll have another one. In Lancaster, Pete Muntean, On Your Side, News 8. Now, News 8 checked with several other breweries, including Trogues and the Appalachian Brewing Company. Both say the shutdown is having little or no effect on them. It's a bit of good news. Yeah. All right, that is News 8's first 11 at 11. Coming up nearly seven months after exploding and killing 15 people, the company that owns a fertilizer plant in West Texas has been cited and fined for safety violations. Also ahead, more than 350 guns were melted down in Ohio today. We'll tell you why and what the steel will now be used for. And here are tonight's lottery numbers. The Daily 370. Big 4, 9471. Quinto, 04722. The Cash 5, 416, 20, 27, 33. And the Match 6, 12, 15, 19. 21, 25, 45.